Let's look at another example of a function whose limit we might want to consider. Um, now this particular function here is an example of a, what's usually called just a simply piecewise function, or if you want to be a little bit more verbose, piecewise defined. Right? Meaning that <coughs> the function is given by different expressions for different values of x, right? So for negative x values, um, it's a linear function given by x plus 1, right? For positive x values, it's given by this quadratic expression here, right? So two different expressions depending on whether x is positive or negative. Um, and so you have to consider each part separately if you're doing any sort of analysis on this function. Uh, Again, one of the things that you might notice is that, in this case, just by design, f of 0 is undefined, right? OK. So you want to analyze a function like this, right? So we're, we're interested in, well, The thing we're interested in here is what is the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, okay? And so again, you can, you can do some investigation. You might look at the graph. And if you look at this graphically, well, what you're going to find is that for x less than 0, you just have, it's a line, right? Slope 1, intercept 1, you get something like that, right? Um, hollow point at x equals 0 because x can be, you know, x is less than 0 here, right? So we can, x can be any negative number we want, but we don't actually let x equal to 0, and we draw that line, right? Now, if x is bigger than 0, then we have a quadratic. We've got a parabola opening downward, shifted up one unit, and we get something that looks like that, right? Well, it certainly looks like there is a common value here that the function is approaching as x gets close to 0, regardless of whether we're looking at negative x values or positive x values. And we do have to consider the two separately, right? We have to consider negative and positive values separately, do the analysis separately, because the function is given by different formulas in those regions. But whichever side of the y-axis we, we look at, right, as x gets closer and closer to 0, it certainly looks like we're getting to a common y value of 1, right? Uh, the other thing, of course, you could do is you could look at a table, right? We could consider a table. So we could look at values of x, and we could look at f of x, right? So for negative values, maybe we look at minus 0 0.1 or minus 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.001, if you like, right? You can get as close to 0 as you want, and, and you find f of x. Here we get 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and so on, right? Whereas if you were to look at positive values, well, th then, then it's even more dramatic. We're going to get 0 0.9999, right? 0 0.99, right? Certainly we are seeing values for f of x, right, y values, getting close to 1. And the closer I take x to 0, the closer f of x is going to get to 1. Uh, so I think it's, it's fair to say, looking at either the graph or looking at the values, that the limit in this case should be 1. Okay? Later in the course, we're going to develop language for dealing with limits when we have functions like this that are piecewise defined, where, where we have to consider values on either side of the point separately. And, and the language that we'll use there is what's called a one-sided limit. So we'll talk about left-hand limits, right-hand limits. So we'll say, well, what happens as x approaches 0 from the left, right? So negative values. What happens if x approaches 0 from the right? 
positive values. And we'll look at those two separately, analyze them separately, and try to come to some conclusion about the overall limit, what happens when x goes to zero.